Leon MBA, MBA also spelled MBA, born February 1902, Libreville, French Congo now in Gabon died November 28, 1967, Paris, father, first president of independent Gabon, whose regime, after an abortive 1964 coup, came to depend on French government and business support. Considered a troublemaker by the French colonial administration before World War II and even exiled by it from 1933 to 1946, MBA entered politics shortly after his return to Gabon. In 1952 he was elected to the Territorial Assembly, and in 1956 he became mayor of the Gabon capital, Libreville. After the victory of his party, the Gabon Democratic Bloc, in the important 1957 elections, MBA was made vice president of the Gabon Executive Council, the highest post then held by an African. He soon afterward became council president and prime minister of the Republic of Gabon, which had opted to remain within the French community in the referendum of September 1958. By the time Gabon gained independence two years later, MBA was already coming under attack from members of his own party as being too conservative and pro-French, and he imprisoned several of them. He was elected president in 1961 and became increasingly paternalistic and authoritarian, stressing both the need for unity and Gabon's dependence on France. In early 1964, just before an election, he unilaterally decided to establish a one-party regime, in the resulting military uprising he was momentarily captured by the Gabonese army. French troops, however, restored him to power. With more tacit French backing, he remained president until his death in 1967. Gabriel Leon MBA, February 9, 1902 to November 28, 1967, was a Gabonese politician who served as both the first prime minister, 1959 to 1961, and president, 1961 to 1967, of Gabon. A member of the Fang ethnic group, MBA was born into a relatively privileged village family. After studying at a seminary, he held a number of small jobs before entering the colonial administration as a customs agent. His political activism in favor of black people worried the French administration, and as a punishment for his activities, he was issued a prison sentence after committing a minor crime that normally would have resulted in a small fine. In 1924, the administration gave MBA a second chance and selected him to head the canton in Estuaire province. After being accused of complicity in the murder of a woman near Libreville, he was sentenced in 1931 to three years in prison and ten years in exile. While in exile in Ubangishari, he published works documenting the tribal customary law of the Fang people. He was employed by local administrators, and received praise from his superiors for his work. He remained a persona non grata to Gabon until the French colonial administration finally allowed MBA to return his native country in 1946. After returning from exile, he began his political ascent by founding the Gabonese Mixed Committee. After his party broke ties with the French Communist Party in 1951, it was allowed to run in French Gabon elections and he was elected to the Territorial Assembly in 1952. After becoming mayor of the capital city, Libreville, in 1956, MBA quickly rose to prominence and was appointed the vice president of the Governor's Council on May 21, 1957, the highest position held by a native African in French Gabon. In 1958, he directed an initiative to include Gabon in the Franco-African community further than before. After independence, he served as the first Prime Minister of Gabon from February 27, 1959 until February 21, 1961. He became the first President of Gabon on August 17, 1960. Political nemesis Jean Hilaire Obam briefly assumed the office of President through a coup d'état in February 1964, but order was restored days later when the French intervened. MBA was re-elected in March 1967, but died of cancer in November 1967 and was succeeded by his vice president, Albert Bernard Bongo. A member of the Fang ethnic tribe, 
MBA was born on February 9, 1902 in Libreville, Gabon. His father, a small business manager and village chief, once worked as the hairdresser to Franco-Italian explorer Pierre Savornian de Brazza. His mother, Louise Bendome, was a seamstress. Both were educated and were among the first evolved couples in Libreville. MBA's brother also played an important role in the colonial hierarchy, he was Gabon's first Roman Catholic priest. In 1909, MBA joined a seminary to receive his primary education. From 1920, he was employed as a store manager, a lumberjack, and trader before entering the French colonial administration as a customs agent. Despite his good job performance, MBA's activism in helping black Gabonians, particularly for the Fangs, worried his superiors. In September 1922, MBA wrote to Edmund Cotier, Lieutenant Governor of Gabon. If on the one hand, the fundamental duty of educating the Fangs is consistent with Gabon's evident economic, military, and even political interests, on the other side, growing in human dignity and the increase of their material well-being do stay, Mr. Governor, the first legitimization of the French authority on them. His remarks upset authorities, and he suffered the consequences in December 1922, when he was sentenced to prison after having committed a minor crime of providing a colleague with falsified documents. MBA reconciled with colonial authorities and was chosen to succeed the deceased chef de Canton, similar to a village chief, of Libreville's Fang neighborhood. As the leader of a group of young Libreville intellectuals, he ignored the advice of Elder Fangs and quickly gained a reputation as a strong, confident, and able-minded man. He once wrote in a letter that he was missioned to enforce public order and defend the general interest and that he did not accept that people transgress the orders received from the authority that I represent. MBA did not have an idealist vision of his job, he saw it as a way to become wealthy. With his colleague Ambamami, he forced labor on the residents of the canton for his personal use, to cover his large expenditures. The colonial administration was aware of the embezzlement, but they chose to overlook it. However, beginning in 1929, the colonial administration started to investigate his activities after they intercepted one of his letters to Akuyate, secretary for the Ligue de Droits de Home, who was accused of being an ally of the Comintern. Despite this suspected communist alliance, the French authorities did not oppose MBA's appointment as head chief of the Estuaire province by his colleagues. In those years, MBA, a member of the Ligue, distanced himself from Roman Catholicism, but did not break completely with his faith. He instead became a follower of the Bwitai religious sect, which Fangs were particularly receptive to. He believed this would help revitalize a society which he felt had been damaged by the colonial administration. In 1931, the sect was accused of murdering a woman whose remains were discovered outside a market in Libreville. Accused of complicity, even though his involvement in the crime was not proven, MBA was removed from power and sentenced to three years in prison and ten years of exile. Officially this was for embezzlement of tax revenues and his abusive treatment of the local labor force. While exiled in the French territory of Obangishari, first in the towns of Bombay and then Bria, he continued to exert influence among Fangs via correspondence with his compatriots in Libreville. Worried by the situation, Governor-General Antonetti ordered in 1934, at the end of his prison sentence, that MBA be placed under surveillance. During his years in exile, he wrote about the customary rights of the Fang people in the Essay de Droit Kudu Meyer Pahin, English, Essay of Pahin Customary Rights, and published it in Bulletin de la Société de Recherches Congolaises in 1938. This work quickly became the main reference on Fang tribal customary law. By 1939, the native ex-chief remained a persona non grata to Gabon, as stated in the letter from the head of the estuary department, a seer de Pompinan. For Leon MBA not only was the leader who had claimed for personal use the colony's money. He enjoyed also a considerable amount of prestige, as his Kong enters could see, which he got from witchcraft activities he practiced. As he was intelligent, 
he exploited the situation to extort the people he had to administrate also the cabal which he had formed. But on the other hand, he knew how to flatter the representatives of the authority, beguiling their vigilance and gaining their confidence. That is why he had, years before, committed all kinds of abuses without ever being otherwise worried about it. In spite of being in exile, MBA was employed by local administrators. Placed in secondary offices and having no proper power, he was an accomplished and valuable employee. Thanks to praiseworthy reports from his superiors, he was once again seen as a reliable indigenous element on which the colonial administration could rely on. In 1942, a sentence reduction was granted to him. Following his release, he became a civil servant in Brazzaville, where his prestige increased. In 1946, MBA returned to Gabon, where he was greeted exultantly by his friends. He was not reinstated as chef de canton, instead, he obtained an important position as store manager for the English trading house John Holt. That same year, he founded the Gabonese Mixed Committee, CMG, a political party close to the African Democratic Rally, RDA, an inter-African party led by Felix Haufu at Boini. The party's main objective was to obtain autonomy for its member states and oppose the Senegalese leader Leopold Sedar Senghor's idea of federalism. Playing on his past as a former exile, and through the network of Bwitai followers, MBA managed to rally support from the Fang and Mayani peoples. His goal was to win indigenous administrative and judicial posts. Based on his success in Libreville, MBA aspired, at one point, to become the head of the region, an idea which many notable Fangs supported during the Pahang Congress at Mitzik in February 1947. However, the colonial authorities refused to give him the position. Due to his relations with the RDA, which was linked to the French Communist Party, MBA was seen as a communist and propagandist in the colony, for the authorities, these suspicions had been confirmed when MBA was involved in the 1949 RDA Congress in Abidjan. In 1951, the CMG decided to break its ties with the communists, siding with the moderate position favored by Haufu at Boini while he did the same. At the same time MBA, while maintaining his rebellious image to the electorate, became close with the French administration. However, the administration was already supporting his main opponent, Congressman Jean Hilaire Obam, who was MBA's protege and his half-brother's foster son. In the legislative elections of June 17, 1951, Obam was easily re-elected, as MBA only received 3,257 votes, just 11% of the electorate. In the territorial elections of March 1952, Obama's Gabonese Democratic and Social Union, UDSG, won 14 of the 24 contested seats, against two for the CMG, however, the CMG received 57% of the votes cast in Libreville. Initially rejected by the Territorial Assembly, MBA allied himself with French representatives in the Assembly. However, using his charismatic traits and his reputation as a man of the people, he managed to win a seat there in 1952. He left the CMG to join the Gabonese Democratic Bloc, BDG, led by Paul Gonchout in 1954, whom MBA intended to overthrow. Gonchout, the secretary of the BDG, appointed MBA secretary general and formed a long-term alliance against Obam. In the legislative elections of January 2, 1956, MBA received 36% of the votes versus 47% for Obam. Though not elected, MBA became the leader of the indigenous territory, and some of the UDSG began to ally themselves with him. In the municipal elections of 1956, MBA received support from the French logging industry, especially Roland Brew, and was elected mayor of Libreville with 65.5% of the vote. On November 23 he was appointed the first mayor of the capital. This has been cited as the BDG's first significant victory over the UDSG. In the French practice of holding multiple posts known as cumulative positions, MBA served as both mayor and deputy. In the territorial elections of March 1957, 
his reputation as a forester's man worked against him, the BDG finished second again, winning 16 of the 40 contested seats, against 18 for the UDSG. Bru and other French foresters bribed several UDSG deputies to switch their political party to the BDG. MBA's party won 21 seats against 19 for Obama's party after a recount. However, in the absence of an absolute majority, both parties were obliged to submit on May 21, 1957, a list of individuals that both agreed were suitable for election into the government. That same day, MBA was appointed vice president of the government council under the French governor. Soon, divisions grew within the government, and Obama resigned from his position and filed a motion of censure against the government. The motion was rejected by a 21 to 19 vote. With MBA's victory, many elected UDSG members joined the parliamentary majority, giving the party a majority with 29 of the 40 legislative seats. Well installed in the government, he slowly began to reinforce his power. After voting in favor of the Franco-African community, similar to the British Commonwealth, in the constitutional referendum of September 28, 1958, Gabon became pseudo-politically independent. French journalist Pierre Pian asserted that MBA secretly tried to prevent Gabonese independence, instead, he lobbied for it to become an overseas territory of France. In December 1958, the Assembly voted to establish the legislature, and then promulgated the Constitution of the Republic of Gabon on February 19, 1959. On February 27, MBA was appointed Prime Minister. After MBA openly declared for the departmentalization of Gabon in November 1959, Jacques Foccart, Charles de Gaulle's spin doctor for African policy, told him that this solution was unthinkable. MBA then decided to adopt a new flag by affixing the design of the national tree, the Anguma, over the French flag. Again, Foccart, as a loyal Frenchman, refused. From July 1958, a third political force tried to establish itself in Gabon, the Parti de Union Nationale Gabonaise, Punga, led by René Paul Suzette and Jean Jacques Bocabel created attempting to unite the Southern Gabonese against the established BDG and UDSG. It was also supported by former UDSG members, radical students, and trade unionists. Though it voted against the constitutional referendum, Punga organized several events geared toward gaining independence and the holding of more parliamentary elections, which were also supported by the UDSG. In March 1960, after independence had already been obtained, MBA cracked down on Punga, claiming its goal had already been reached. He filed an arrest warrant for Suzette for conspiring against him and searched the houses of UDSG members, who he accused of complicity. Intimidated, three deputies of the UDSG joined the majority. On June 19, 1960, legislative elections were organized through the Scrutanda List voting system, a form of block voting in which each party offers a list of candidates who the population vote for, the list that obtains a majority of votes is declared the winner and obtains all the contested seats. Through the redistricting of district and constituency boundaries, the BDG arbitrarily received 244 seats, while the UDSG received 77. In the month before full political independence of Gabon was achieved on August 13, MBA signed 15 cooperation agreements with France, pertaining to national defense, technical cooperation, economic support, access to materials, and national stability. On August 17, independence was proclaimed. However, the Prime Minister realistically declared on August 12, we must not waste our chances by imagining that with independence, we now own a powerful fetish that will fulfill our wishes. In believing that with independence everything becomes easy and possible, there is a danger of descending into anarchy, disorder, poverty, famine. MBA aspired to establish a democratic regime, which, in his view, was necessary for the development and attraction of investments in Gabon. He attempted to reconcile the imperatives of democracy and the necessity for a strong and coherent government. Yet in practice, 
the regime showed a fundamental weakness in attaining MBA's goal in which he, who had by this time become known as the old man, or the boss, would have a high degree of authority. A cult of personality developed steadily around MBA, songs were sung in his praise and stamps and loincloths were printed with his effigy. His photograph was displayed in stores and hotels across Gabon, in government buildings hung next to that of de Gaulle. In November 1960, a crisis broke out within the majority party. After deciding to reshuffle the cabinet without consulting parliament, the president of the National Assembly, Paul Gonjout, a previous ally of MBA's, filed a motion of censure. Gonjout supposedly hoped to benefit from a balance of power modified to his own advantage, and specifically sought the establishment of a strong parliament and a prime minister with executive power. MBA, who did not share these ideas, reacted repressively. On November 16, under the pretext of a conspiracy, he declared a state of emergency, ordering the internment of eight BDG opponents and the dissolution of the National Assembly the day after. Electors were asked to vote again on February 12, 1961. Gan Chout was sentenced to two years in prison. Suzette, who also opposed the Constitution, was also sentenced to the same amount of jail time. Upon their releases, MBA appointed Gan Chout president of the Economic Council and Suzette minister of agriculture, both mostly symbolic posts. On December 4, MBA was elected to replace Gan Chout as secretary general of the BDG. He turned to the opposition to strengthen his position. With Obam, he formed a number of sufficiently balanced political unions to appeal to the electorate. On February 12, they won 99.75% of the vote. The same day, MBA was elected president of Gabon, being the only candidate. In thanks for his help, MBA appointed Obama as foreign minister to replace André Gustave Anguil. On February 21, 1961, a new constitution was unanimously adopted, providing for a hyper-presidential regime. MBA now had full executive powers, he could appoint ministers whose functions and responsibilities were decided by him, he could dissolve the National Assembly by choice or prolong its term beyond the normal five years, he could declare a state of emergency when he believed the need arose, though for this amendment he would have to consult the people via a referendum. This was, in fact, very similar to the constitution adopted in favor of Fulbert Yalu at roughly the same time. A report from the French Secret Service summarized the situation as follows. He regarded himself as a truly democratic leader, nothing irritated him more than being called a dictator. Still, he wasn't happy until he had the constitution rewritten to give him virtually all power and transforming the parliament into high-priced scenery that could be bypassed as needed. The new constitution and the National Union, a political union they founded, suspended the quarrels between MBA and Obama from 1961 to 1963. Despite this, political unrest grew within the population, and many students held demonstrations on the frequent dissolutions of the National Assembly and the general political attitude in the country. The president did not hesitate to enforce the law himself, with a chic order, he whipped citizens who did not show respect for him, including passers-by who forgot to salute him. In addition, in February 1961, he decreed the internment of approximately 20 people for these demonstrations. On February 9, 1963, the president pardoned those arrested during the political crisis of November 1960. On February 19, he broke his ties with Obama, all UDSG representatives were dismissed, with the exception of MBA supporter Francis Mee. In an attempt to oust Obama from his legislative seat, MBA appointed him president of the Supreme Court on February 25. Thereafter, MBA claimed that Obama had resigned from the National Assembly, citing incompatibility with parliamentary functions. Obama resolved the problem by resigning from his post on the Supreme Court, complicating matters for MBA. Faced with reports of tension between the government and the National Assembly, even though 70% of it were BDG members, 
the Gabonese president dissolved the legislature on January 21, 1964 as an economy measure. The electoral conditions were announced as such, the election 67 districts were reduced to 47. MBA disqualified Obama by announcing anyone who held a post recently was banned. Any party would have to submit 47 candidates who had to pay 160 US dollars or none at all. Thus, over 7,500 US dollars would be deposited without considering campaign expenses. MBA's idea was that no party other than his would have the money to enter candidates. In response to this, the opposition announced its refusal to participate in elections that they did not consider fair. From the night of February 17 to the early morning of February 18, 1964, 150 Gabonese military personnel, headed by Lt. Jacques Mambo and Valéry Esson, arrested President of the National Assembly Louis Bigman, French commanders Claude Holland and Major Royer, on Radio Libreville, the military announced to the Gabonese people that a coup d'état had taken place, and that they required technical assistance and told the French not interfere in this matter. MBA was instructed to broadcast a speech acknowledging his defeat. The D-Day is here, the injustices are beyond measure, these people are patient, but their patience has limits, he said. It came to a boil. During these events, no gunshots were fired. The people did not react strongly, which according to the military, was a sign of approval. A provisional government was formed, and the presidency was offered to Obama. The government was composed of civilian politicians from both the UDSG and BDG, such as Paul Gonchout. The plotters were content to ensure security for civilians. The small Gabonese army did not intervene in the coup, composed mostly of French officers, they remained in their barracks. Second Lieutenant Ndouadou gave instructions to transfer MBA to Ndjol, Obama's electoral stronghold. However, due to heavy rain, the deposed president and his captors took shelter in an unknown village. The next morning they decided to take him over the easier road to Lamberine. Several hours later, they returned to Libreville. The new head of government quickly contacted French ambassador Paul Kisserin, to assure him that the property of foreign nationals was protected and to ask him to prevent any French military intervention. But in Paris, de Gaulle decided otherwise. MBA was one of the most loyal allies to France in Africa. While visiting France in 1961, MBA said, all Gabonese have two fatherlands, France and Gabon. Moreover, under his regime, Europeans enjoyed particularly friendly treatment. The French authorities therefore decided, in accordance with signed Franco-Gabon agreements, to restore the legitimate government. Intervention could not commence without a formal request to the head of state of Gabon. Since MBA was otherwise occupied, the French contacted the vice president of Gabon, Paul-Marie Yembit, who had not been arrested. However, he remained unaccounted for, therefore, they decided to compose a predated letter that Yembit would later sign, confirming their intervention. Less than 24 hours later, French troops stationed in Dakar and Brazzaville landed in Libreville and restored MBA back into power. Over the course of the operation, one French soldier was killed, while 15 to 25 died on the Gabonese side. After he was reinstated into power, MBA refused to consider the coup was directed against him and his regime. He believed it was a conspiracy against the state. Soon, however, anti-government demonstrations sprang up, with slogans such as Leon MBA, President de France, English, Leon MBA, President of the French, or ones that called for the end of the dictatorship. They showed solidarity after Obama was charged on March 23 for his alleged involvement in the coup d'état. Despite the fact that he did not participate in the planning of the coup, Obama was sentenced at his trial to 10 years of hard labor and 10 years of exile. Despite these events, legislative elections, which were planned before the coup, were held in April 1964. The major opposition parties were deprived of their leaders, who were prevented from participating in the elections due to their involvement in the coup.
the UDSG disappeared from the political scene, and the opposition consisted of parties that lacked national focus and maintained only regional or pro-democracy platforms. The opposition still won 46% of the votes and 16 of 47 seats, while the BDG received 54% of the vote and 31 seats in the assembly. His French friends constantly surrounded him, protecting or providing him with counsel. A presidential guard was created by Bob Malaubier, a former French secret agent, and co-financed by French oil groups. The oil groups, active in the country since 1957, had strengthened their interests in 1962 after the discovery of offshore oil deposits. Gabon quickly became a major oil supplier for France. They carried such influence in Gabon that following the February 1964 coup, the decision to seek military intervention was taken by the CEO of Union Générale de Patrols, UGP, now known as Elf Aquitaine, Pierre Guillaumat, Fockhart, and other French businessmen and leaders. Later on, another UGP executive, Guy Ponsale, was appointed as political advisor to the president and became MBA's representative in discussions with French companies. However, the Gabonese president was afraid of internal strife or assassination, so he remained secluded inside his heavily defended presidential palace. Ponsale helped MBA obtain support from political moderates and accompanied him in his visits around the country in order to restore his reputation among the Gabonese people. From 1965, the French began looking for a successor for MBA, who was aging and sick. They found the perfect candidate in Albert Bernard Bongo, later known as Al Haj Omar Bongo Ondimba, a young leader in the president's cabinet. Bongo was personally tested by General de Gaulle in 1965, during a visit to the Elysee Palace. Confirmed as MBA's successor, Bongo was appointed on September 24, 1965 as presidential representative and placed in charge of defense and coordination. In August 1966, MBA was admitted to the hospital Charles Bernard, a hospital in Paris. Despite his inability to govern, the president clung to his power. Only after a long insistence by Fockhart did MBA agree to appoint Bongo as vice president in replacement of Yembit, announcing his decision through a radio and television message recorded in his room on November 14, 1966. A constitutional reform in February 1967 legitimized Bongo as MBA's successor. The preparations for the succession were finalized by the early legislative and presidential elections held on March 19, 1967. Since no one dared to stand on the opposition ticket, MBA was re-elected with 99.9% .9 of the vote, while the BDG won all seats in the assembly. On November 28, 1967, just days after he took his presidential oath at the Gabonese Embassy, MBA died of cancer in Paris, where he had been treated since August of that year. He was survived by his wife, Pauline MBA, and 11 children. The day after MBA's death, Bongo constitutionally succeeded him as president of Gabon. Gabon's main airport, the Lyon MBA International Airport, was later named for him. Forty years after his death, the Lyon MBA Memorial was built in Libreville to honor his memory. President Bongo laid the cornerstone for the memorial on February 9, 2007, and it was inaugurated by Bongo on November 27, 2007. In February 2008, it was opened to the public. In addition to serving as a mausoleum for MBA, the memorial is a cultural center. Thank you for watching this video.